Uh-huh, I sure will. A uh, Good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I have something, and it so describes how I was living. It so captures the feelings that I had about beginning on the pathway of my dreams. It, it so describes how I feel felt when I was about to attempt something. And I have some striking news for you. It describes often how I feel still today to a degree. So let me tell you what that is. And I know it's happened to a lot of people. Here's an analogy that I, uh, I've heard a couple of different ways, but I've kind of, you know, fixed it around to where I can, uh, drink it better, and I think it fits my personality to describe it to people best this way. You know, uh, I was I was talk I've talked often about the urgency of doing something with your life, of of getting started today, of stopping the procrastination and putting it off, and waiting on all your ducks to line up in a row, and waiting until the Stars align themselves. If if you're waiting on such a thing, you, you you you're never gonna get started. I don't really I don't know too many people who can say that all the ducks just lined up in a row. Things happen. Things happen. Even when you get them lined up, one of the ducks get out of line, or somebody knock over the dominoes. Something happens. But here's 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 the point I'm getting at. God has. So many blessings available to you, you who's listening. God has so many blessings available to you from where you are right now. I don't care what you've gotten yourself into or what you've done. God has so many blessings that he can send your way. But you have to do something. See, a lot of people just sit around and go, man, I don't, I don't, something always happening to you. You always getting a break. You always doing this. You always doing Man, don't nothing come my way. Listen to me. If nothing ever comes your way, you know why that is? It's because you're not doing anything. I promise you you're not. See, here's the deal. God has all these blessings he wants to send you, but you got to give him something to work with now. Come on. You have to give God something to work with. God will bless you. 
God can touch people's hearts on your behalf. He can move situations around for you. He can align the stars. He can set the ducks up in a row. But align the stars and move people around and touch people's hearts and set the ducks up in a row for what? Based on what? Have you put forth any effort? Have you made a single step in any direction to do the right thing or go the right way that gives him something to put his finger on? Come on, man. God can only bless you according to your faith. If you have a little bit of faith, give him that. Let him work with that. He can do that. You know, man, I didn't always start with these speeches you hear in the morning now. I ain't always had these. I grew to these. I stumbled my way to these. I messed up my way to these here. I got it wrong so many times to be able to sound like I got some sense. I've said it often. Failure is a wonderful teacher. Do you know how many times I have had to have failed to have what I have in my head today? I'm telling you, man, it's a process. People get mad at the process. You got to do something to give God something to work with. He'll bless you, but what you want me to bless if you ain't putting forth any effort, any effort. If you just sit down and start, I got a book coming out, I'm telling you, man, that's going to really explain this thoroughly, man, where you can get blessed from wherever you are in your life, wherever your starting point is, wherever you find yourself wound up, you can get you can get it back from there. I've done it. Man, by the grace of God, I done it. I, I, I got over, man. I learned some things along the way. Because here's the deal. As long as God keeps waking you up in the morning, he ain't through with you yet. When he's done, you're done. But if God still has a plan for you, you wake up in the morning. He still got some more work for you to do, you wake up in the morning. So if you keep waking up, man, it's something that God wants from you, would love to have from you. And he can work with you, man, if you just walk towards him a little bit. So here's the deal. I know it's hard for the average person to start because the fear of the unknown is incredible. What if I fail? What if I don't get picked? You know, one of the hardest things I ever did was walking in to quit my job. Oh, man, let me tell you about that day when I decided that I was going to be a full-time comedian after winning an amateur night one time. Quitting your job, following your dream. Going for it, despite all the naysayers, it's like stepping off a cliff. It's like actually just walking off the edge of a cliff, hoping, hoping now, not really knowing, but hoping. Hoping is the bare basis of faith. I stepped off that cliff hoping that my parachute would open and allow me to drift down. See, I've never skydived before, but I would imagine part of the thrill, and I don't know this because I'm not going to skydive to find out. I think part of the thrill for people is the the danger part of throwing yourself out of plane and how it feels to be free falling. But the whole time they're free falling, having this exhilarating over the top moment. You have got to believe in your heart of hearts. You have got to hope with everything in you that when you pull this cord, the chute opens or else this ain't a good move at all. But you've packed your chute yourself. You've taken the lessons. So you go ahead and you make the leap. Now, the only thing about quitting your job and following your dream is you ain't really been trained all that good for this. You ain't really you didn't pack your chute, but you ain't never opened it before. So I walked off this cliff. That's what it was like. And you following your dream is like you walking off a cliff. Now, let me tell you something. Here's the part where people don't never make the jump. They see somebody like myself who jumped off the cliff and the the parachute don't open right away. And I hit a couple rocks on the way down. I got my back cut up pretty bad. I got my clothes ripped off. They see that. Three years living in a car, man, he got his life toe down jumping off that cliff. I ain't jumping off that cliff. But see, what you don't understand is you don't you don't know it. But eventually the chute will open and I'm at the parachute opening part of my life, man. 
where the chute didn't open and I'm drifting. And I'm, I'm able to go over to Paris, guide my chute over to Paris and glide. I've, I've glided over to Africa and seen what it looked like. It's a slow ride down when the parachute finally opened. Uh, and my back didn't heal, too. And the cuts that I had on me, I remember now I know how to stay away from the edge. But the parachute didn't open. And I'm enjoying my life for the first time. I'm gliding. But I, I got hit up against the rock. I can see more. I get a chance to see more things. I get to glide and see more parts of the world. I'm living my dream. The parachute open. Your parachute is going to open. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. It'll never open if you don't step off that cliff. You got to step off that cliff. God will get the parachute open for you. But you got to jump, baby. That's the hard part, ain't it? Now, the question is, the end of this story right here today, when you jumping? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your undivided attention, please? Steve Harvey Morning Show is underway. And I said underway means going down right now, Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Carla Pharrell. Hello, Steve. What's up, crew? Kill Junior Spates. Morning, Unc. Nephew Tommy. Yes, sir. In the building. <laughs> and moi. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, man. How you feeling? It's morning time. Who's the morning? How you feeling, mm. Steve? Oh, uh, I feel pretty good, you know. I am feel pretty good. Got me some rest. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, played golf this weekend. First time I've played golf or round the golf without Gregory Calhoun, my good friend out of Montgomery that passed, man. Mm-hmm. My first full round of golf, my boy Blue came down and played with me. Oh, uh, we took a picture. Me and Blue took a picture and left a space in the middle of it because that's where Greg Calhoun used to stand all the time. Uh, yeah, you were telling yeah. us that. Wow, Steve. That was good, man. So we had a good time, mm-hmm. man. Got a golf tournament coming up shortly. Uh, it's going to be in the Atlanta area. I'll keep you all posted. I'm naming the golf tournament uh, the Greg Calhoun Memorial Classic. In Atlanta. honor of your friend. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. Mr. Calhoun. Great yeah, going to give all the money to uh, charity, which is what he would have wanted to do anyway. Beautiful. But uh, we're going to do a golf course, I mean a golf uh, tournament uh, up in Atlanta at Bears Best. Mm-hmm. Nice uh, course. Right, I think right before we do the uh, mentoring camp. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, go down there, strike it up, then get on the helicopter and go on down to the camp. What's your game looking like? Excuse us. Get on what? Hell, you you heard him. You can't just get in the car. It's not mine. We we ain't going to rule it out. But the fact that that's your ride. (laughs) Everybody's getting in the car. Well, it saves a lot of time, you know. I got you. I got you. I get let down right in the middle of the field. Ooh, ballerific. I'm there. Jump out. Jump out. I'm there in 20, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, which normally about a about an hour 20 ride. Mm-hmm. Might be quicker than that. Okay. Helicopter, a little unnerving, though. Oh, why you say that? Eh, just that one propeller. Eh. <laughs> You'd be a little concerned. Mm-hmm. You can hear it the whole time. You be what? You can hear it, the helicopter. Oh, the helicopter. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Oh. That's all you got. Yeah, I love landing so I can get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiss the ground, huh? Yeah. And you know, you, you can hold your head straight up. It's them blades not going to hit you, but everything in you makes you duck. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no matter where you at. Do yeah. You, like when you're in a car and you're, and you're in a parking structure or something, do you duck when you go under the, um, like you're inside the car, but you, you still duck? When you, oh. If you get too close to the yeah. roof or something. Yeah, six feet clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still duck inside the car. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> still do that. Yeah. I've seen trucks on the highway be going down the highway and can't clear the bridge mm-hmm. and rip the whole back of that trailer off. Whoa. All right. Uh, we're moving on. Coming up at 32 after the hour, another edition of Ask Steve. When we Uh-oh. come back, short answer, Steve. Short we'll answer. Right, yes. All right, here I go. <laughs> we'll be right back, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Hey guys, I'm really, really happy. I have to tell you that spring is finally here. It was the cold yeah. winter. It's finally here. Easter's coming, right? Mm -hmm. And I especially mm -hmm. love yes. spring because the days are longer. You know, we get more daylight and it's just so sunny in my house. I have a lot of windows, so it really gets me into my spring cleaning groove. And you know what I like to clean with? My lemon scented pine saw. Yes. <sighs> Pine saw, that's right. I keep my countertops, my floors, the trash cans, all the surfaces in my house, lemony fresh. Lemon fresh clean with the number one dilutable lemon cleaner. That's right. It is Pine Saw. Clean your way. All right, Jim. Love it, Sharon. Thank you, guys. Yes. Clean it, sure. You guys got to come over and just go... Yeah, we want to smell that because we know we ain't going to smell no food. So we might be well, yeah. It's going to smell sure good, huh? Oh, nice and clean and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you would just serve it, Shirley? Pass out? <laughs> oh, <that's cute>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, it is time to ask Steve. And um, I, I love these because Steve has the, some of the most interesting answers. Yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go, Steve. Okay. First question, what is the best age, you think? The best age? Age, uh-huh. 50. Yeah, really? 50. Yeah, I think 50, 50 fly, man. Why? Yeah, because you, you've done enough to know not to do no more stupid stuff, mm -hmm. but you still can. <laughs> oh, but you still can. Oh, it. okay. Uh, yeah. You're able to do it. Yeah, you okay. can still can. Wow. Yeah, all right. Wow. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. I, I thought you were going to say, say your current age. That's what well, I thought. Well, no, see, 62 is greatness uh -huh. because, you know, you know not to do nothing. I, I, I block out most of them thoughts now. Oh, mm. 50, I could have the thoughts and do still do some crazy mess and might do it, but I refrained. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. that's, okay. that's what it's makes 50 so yeah. exciting. Oh, yeah. All right, Tommy, yeah. you got a question? Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, I got one. I, 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 I've been going through this lately. Let me ask you. How often is it healthy to cry? Uh, Depends on who you are in the circumstance, but I think... I think if a man don't get out two a year, really, I think if a man don't get out two a year, he, he might be just bottling up some stuff. Are you really? That is really profound. Steve, two times a year. That yeah. is profound to me. Yeah, I, th I think a man should be allowed to cry twice a year. Something has twice to affect year. you emotionally. Something mm -hmm. oh, okay. has to resonate from your soul. You have to allow something. To penetrate your your soul, to, you got to remember on something God then brought you through, and in your current state, you go, man, I used to be messed up. Look what He done for me now. You got to have that, or uh, or you got to see somebody who you see accomplishing something, and you see the appreciation that they have, and you happy for them, and it touches you because you've been there, done that. That's what I was going to ask you. Those are happy tears. Yeah, you're talking about, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I don't want you to have grieving tears mm -hmm. twice a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm oh, talking, okay. you asked me how long is it healthy for a man mm -hmm. to cry. That's I think cool. you got to get it out. All right. I like that. I mean, you know, I ain't looking forward to tomorrow, you know. Tomorrow. Well, what's today? Today's Tuesday. The 27th. You're not looking No, today's the 26th. 26th, yeah. Yeah, see, tomorrow, tomorrow's my mama's birthday. I used to, I it, it used to crush me mm -hmm. when her mm -hmm. birthday came. Mm -hmm. It wow. used to crush me, mm -hmm. but now I handle it better, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that used to, man, oh man, oh man. Can I tell you something? Since you brought that up, we can move on after this. But I completely understand that. My mom, my birthday is July twenty eighth. My mom's birthday was July 29th. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, the yeah. one day after wow. my so I get yeah. it, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Completely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I completely yeah. get it. But yeah, let's we can. Um, uh, you got one, Junior? What you got? Best advice you ever received? Huh? Mm. You can't tell God how to bless you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I think everybody can. Amen. Somebody that told one. me yeah. that one. You can't tell God how to bless you. You know, man, the, probably so the true. best, if I wish I had known this man, that you can want for something so badly, but if it goes against the will of God, then God don't punish you for wanting it. He just changes your mindset 
so you can rearrange what you want until you start wanting the same thing he wants for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. oh, how many times you had to turn <laughs> my stupid wagon around? <laughs> Good Lord. Come on, Carla. You got a question? Yeah, I do. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Say a word in Spanish. Caliente. Ooh, hot. Uh-huh. The, the reason, I'm la- the reason I, I laughed at that is because um, <laughs> Steve used to take Spanish lessons live on the air. Uh, how, how you do that? And all he wanted to know was were the curse words in Spanish. He knew all yeah. of those. <laughs> All okay, of them. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep on That's asking. Hilarious. <laughs> so say cold in Spanish. You say caliente. Say cold in Spanish. I have no idea. <laughs> How you gonna know how to not know? Cold? I told you what I he lo- no what he idea. wanted to know in Spanish. <laughs> A so Spanish that was it, huh? Cool yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we How we talking? Caliente, culo, culo, caliente. Gosh, Come on, get. What you want? Next question. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, since you're, you know, you're you're on a program, I know you are, Steve, but just think back. What is your favorite carb? Do you like bread, pasta, rice? What, what What's your favorite carb? Pasta is one of my favorite carbs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why? Uh, because it's delicious. <laughs> Because yes, you can put is. meat with it, you can put fish with it, uh-huh. you can put pesto with it, you can put chicken. marinara with it, mm-hmm. you can put chicken with it, Seafood, you can put cheese with yeah. it, you can put vegetables in it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much ain't nothing you can't put in pasta, man. Yeah. Italian food is one of my favorite foods. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine's so good. All right, well, thank you, Steve. That was, a, that was fun. Uh, yeah, that was fun. It's You're always fun. You're absolutely welcome, guys. <laughs> Coming up, <laughs> more fun with the nephew. Run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Dr. Dre bragged on his daughter's admission to USC, and people on social media are throwing him lots and lots of shade. But right mm. now, the nephew wow. is here. <laughs> we'll talk about it. You'll see. <laughs> Nephew is here to run that prank back. What you got, Nep? Media ministry. Media ministry. Oh we running so that we thing back. Some. Yes, we need yes. it. Media ministry. Let's run it, cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to uh, read Dre. Andre? Yeah, this is Andre. Hey, uh, Dre, you the person that runs the uh, the media at the church. You over the sound system and everything and all the... Um, the, the screens and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I work with the church. Okay. Uh, how long you been at the church, man? I've probably been at the church for like five years now. About five years. Okay, okay. Listen, my name Doug, man, Doug Newsom, and uh, I haven't I haven't joined the church yet, but uh, I've been coming because my cousin, you know, my um, uh, my cousin them go there. They've been going there for quite a bit. My my cousin, uh, uh, I got I got one cousin that's in the choir, uh, Latrice. You know who Latrice is, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the Latrice. Doug, you you ain't a member of the church yet? No, no, I'm not a member of the church yet, but, you know, I've, I've been in there. You know, I, I'm liking the service and everything, so, you know, it's just a matter of time, you know, uh, 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 when I feel like I'm I'm ready to actually join. But I, 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 I ain't going to lie, man, I, I'm calling you because I got a, a, a bit of an issue about uh about something I've, I've been noticing for the last three weeks that's been going on in the church. And I wanted to, uh, you know, I had to ask around who was over the media uh, yeah, mini- yeah, ministry. That's yeah, that's that's what's you. What's going on, man? Okay, so uh, man, I, I I don't know what's happening, uh, and, and and I ain't gonna lie, I gotta be real with you. It pissed me off, but uh, for the last three weeks, you know, uh, when my cousin get ready to sing, you know, I don't know why when she get up to sing, that the mic just go out. You know what I mean? The mic just go completely out when she getting ready to sing, and I'm like, what? What? This don't make no sense, you know? So, Doug, man, I, I ain't been. It's not like I'm timing it. I don't know. I mean, we don't have the best equipment at the church, you know. Uh-huh. We just we just got to work with what we got. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there trying to single out your cousin. Sometimes the mics get a glitch, man. But see, but see that, but see that's my problem though. The problem I'm having is the glitch happening every single time my cousin get the mic. You know, that's that's the problem I'm having. I'm like, okay, so every time Latrice get up there to sing, then you know the mic go out. I didn't came three weeks straight. I, I ain't heard my cousin saying nothing yet. So I, I, I'm calling you, bro, on, on you know, on some real man to man stuff. Just letting you know, bro, I'm coming to church again this Sunday. I'm coming. Now, if Latrice might go out again, hey dog, 
Somebody gonna get the ass whooped. You, you gonna bring that energy to church? Um, say what now? You gonna bring that energy to church? I told you, man, it's just a glitch. Ain't nothing I could do about it. Okay, what what, what I'm saying though, bro, what I'm saying is this right here though, and I'm being as real as I can. Which, if 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 Latrice might go out on Sunday, immediately after that service is over with, somebody getting their ass whooped. I don't know why you calling, threatening a member of the church, man. Like I said, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I try to keep everything running cool. You know, I try to keep it running smooth. I can't tell you when a glitch is going to happen. It's electronics, man. It's old equipment. Now, I'd love for you to be a member of the church with us, but I can't. I mean, why are you calling up here threatening me? Hey, bro, because because I, I done came up there three times. Three times I done came up there to see my cousin sing, you know. My cousin been singing since we was kids. We all love to hear her sing. We love her voice. You know, we 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 you know we grew up listening to Latrice sing. So what I'm saying, I'm gonna say this here though, and I just said it, I didn't I didn't said it twice already. I'm coming up there Sunday. If if Latrice might go out, bro, let me just cut you off real quick. Ain't no way that you gonna come up here and whoop nobody's ass, man. That just ain't gonna happen. Like I told you, it's a glitch. But you ain't coming up to the church talking all this. Shit and then gonna whip somebody's ass. That okay. ain't gonna happen. Okay, so I see where we at now. So so let me just go on and direct it this way. So let me say this. From Doug to Andre, from me to you, I'm I'm letting you know right now. Come Sunday, if if Latrice might go out, not not know somebody, I'm whooping your ass, Dre. I'm whooping your ass if the damn uh, might go okay, out. Okay, first off, ain't nobody whooping my ass. Especially no punk ass dude named Doug. I right? he ain't gonna come to the church and whoop my ass. That gonna happen. Okay. What 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 make you think you can't get your ass whooped, Andre? What makes me? You over here threatening somebody over here with the media. You want to come test these hands and come test the hands, man. You know what? Matter of fact, when y'all next rehearsal, I can just come on over there then. You come on over there, man. Why don't you come over right now? I'm over at the church right now. Oh, so you at the church right now? I'm at the church right now. Okay, bet. Okay, okay right bet. Now. If you okay. want to catch this no, shit, no, 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 that's cool. That's cool. You're no, going to no. need the church after you don't get this ass. Okay, hey, 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 Bobby. Tell DJ then we finna go to the church, dog. No, no, tell him we finna roll up there to this damn church. Okay? Come on. Call all up. Call all up. Dog, you finna get your ass whipped, dog. So you done pushed up on the wrong one now. You done pushed up on the wrong one. So all, all this little old shit you talking, cool. You finna have eight dudes hey, come man, up there and whoop your ass right now. So, Dougie, you can bring Johnny, you can bring Billy, you can bring whoever the f*** you want, but it ain't going to happen. Okay, okay, cool. In, in real talk, Doug, you done call me talking all this b****, how you about to come up here and whoop my ass, and now you need, like, seven, eight other guys. Back in the day, we used to just handle this one-on-one, -on -one, and now you want to come up here talking all that sh you going to bring every cousin you got in your f***ing house? If you want to do this sh man, come up here. Let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, 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 you, you scared or something? Ain't nobody scared, but you talking that you whooping my ass. Now you want to bring up every disciple you know, man. You know what? Bring whoever you want. Just don't bring nobody you want back, because I'll put you all down. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you this here. I'm going to bring Tommy with me, and Tommy going to be the one that's going to act a damn fool with you. I'm telling you that right now. Who is Tommy? So you don't know Tommy? No, nah, I don't know Tommy. Okay. Do you know nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Ah! I'm calling this number. Hey, man, Latrice got me to prank phone call. You might have fact the whole choir is in on this, and they know that I am pranking you, Drake. Man, now you got me done turning up on the radio. On the man, now I got to go ask for forgiveness for all that smack I don't talk. Now come Sunday, I'm turning everybody's mic off. Okay, man, I got to hey. ask you this, Drake. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? You know it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And yo, Tommy, if I could turn your mic off, I'd turn that <laughs> off, too. <laughs> Y'all with me on this, right? You yeah. know, sometimes uh -huh. you got to go at these church yeah. folks. You got to go at them straight ahead sometimes, you know? Okay. Now, play too much. The people on the, they run that camera, though. Don't play with them. They don't play. <laughs> You got to go at them straight ahead. Get wow. the microphone right. Well, my cousin get up there this coming Sunday. Uh -huh. If I don't hear her, 
Somebody get in the air whoop. Somebody get in the air whoop now. If I don't you can't hear talk my to people like that. No, you can't. Somebody got to try it. All right, it's going down April the 13th, Saturday, April 13th. It will be, I will be in uh, Glenside, Pennsylvania, along with the beautiful Samoa. And uh, tickets are on sale right now, so get your tickets. The week after that is Knoxville, Tennessee, Friday night, April the 20th. Knoxville Civic Auditorium, me and the one and only Bruce Bruce. Tickets on sale right now. Go ahead, Shirley. All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Dr. Dre, this is a story you wanted to hear about, Steve. Dr. Dre's attempt to brag about his daughter's smarts has really kind of backfired on him. Uh, You know, Dre, he's a big music mogul now, thanks to Beats by Dre. Well, anyway, Dre wanted to spotlight how proud he was of his daughter, Truly Young's, acceptance into USC. That's his daughter's name, Truly Young. The caption said, My daughter got accepted into USC all on her own. No jail time. Well, the post has been taken down now. It was on Instagram, but he couldn't resist throwing shade against the celebrities like uh, Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman, who allegedly paid uh, for their children's way as part of this whole big bribery scam. Uh, it should be noted that uh, Dr. Dre donated $70 million to USC for the creation of the Jimmy uh, Iveen and Andre Young Academy for Arts, Technology, and Business of Innovation in 2013. Now people mm. are digging up old posts from May of last year showing Truly complaining about how Dad is pushing me to go to USC. So that that's mm. what happened, you know. Well... Let me say a few things here. Because Andre Young is Dre. It's Dr. Dre. Dre. That's yeah. his real name. Yeah. Okay. First of all, his let name me, is let, me, let me, yeah, let me say this. When you donate money like that, it's a tax write off. Mm-hmm. When you give that much money to a school, you're going to get your name on the building. They have done this for years. But now, remember, this $70 million between him and Jimmy Iovine benefits thousands and thousands of students who come through that university. Mm-hmm. I just, I just want to say that now. I just yeah. want to say that. You I'm can. not defending anything. I want mm-hmm. everybody to understand what this man, Dr. Dre, has done. So, quite naturally... He would love to see his daughter go to school. Now, his daughter still passed the SAT and got all the grades. But now, he has been a major contributor to that school to get his name on that building. But it not only benefited his daughter, but the thousands of students who are able to go into that type of building. Well, I, I think, yeah, and, and you're right at what you're saying. But I, the problem is, is that he said the no jail time. So people felt that he was gloating, you know, and he was, you know, he picking. Shade. He was he, he was throwing shade at, you know, Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman. So, well, of course, they know, went. Yeah. I think it was a bit of humor thrown in there, too. That's the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. No jail time. Because, you know, first thing you want to know is, well, what did he do to get his daughter in there? Well, he made $7 million damn contribution to a school. I just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he took the post down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. of course, because they not gonna understand that part of it. they just gonna eat his ass live, you know. <laughs> well, it was a board, you know. He did public. Well, I mean yeah. that that's legal. Yeah, yeah. I mean right. people do that all the time. Rich people do that all and the time. And been doing yeah, it, yeah, for years and Oof. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. for generations. Right there, you go. All right. So speaking of the USC scandal, Steve Olivia Jade uh, Gianelli, Lori Laughlin's daughter, is now blaming her mother and her father, Massimo. Gianelli for yeah. ruining her life. An insider said that. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, an insider said, uh, well, she lost her. I mean, it's a big thing, Steve. She lost her endorsement deals with Sephora, Tresemme, and Estee Lauder in the wake of the scandal. She's really angry with her parents because she told them she didn't want to go to college and she was pushed. All right, Steve, it is that time. Ladies and gentlemen, she's here, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. 
Well, the Russian election meddling probe is over. American public has been given only a four-page summary. Nevertheless, it sounds like the president's looking for some payback. There are a lot of people out there that have done some very, very evil things, very bad things. I would say treasonous things uh, against our country. And uh, hopefully that people that have done such harm to our country, we've gone through a period of uh, really bad things happening. Uh, Those people will certainly be looked at. Bad is the operative word. Apparently, Attorney General William Barr released his short synopsis of the Mueller report on Sunday, saying that it concluded that there was no collusion between the Russians and the Trump presidential campaign, but not exonerating him of obstruction of justice. Democrats want to see the whole report, since they point out that Attorney General Barr was picked by President Trump. Attorney uh, Michael Avenatti, who represented porn star Stormy Daniels in her legal battle against Donald Trump, has been arrested for alleged extortion and some other things, and he faces charges in both California and New York. In New York, U.S. Attorney Jeff Berman says Avenatti is accused of trying to extort upwards of $20 million from the athletic wear company Nike. Avenatti repeatedly pressured the company to agree to pay or risk having Avenatti hold a press conference that he claimed would dramatically drive down the stock price of the company and its market value. In California, Avenatti is accused of embezzling a client in order to pay expenses for his coffee company and use phony tax returns, they say, to get millions in bank loans. Avenatti says he's innocent and will be found so. For the second time in a week, a Parkland shooting survivor has committed suicide. A spokesman for the Coral Springs Police Department says a student at Marjorie Stoneman High School took his own life Saturday night and that another survivor of the Valentine's Day massacre and reportedly suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder killed herself on March 17th. Student activist David Hogg, a former student there, said in an earlier post that having students go back to the same high school where only two weeks after 17 students and teachers were killed is cruel and unusual punishment. Also, I have to tell you, the father now of one of the young children killed in Connecticut Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre has taken his own life. Authorities say that Jeremy Richmond left a suicide note. However, the contents are unknown. A federal judge in Seattle has ordered the Defense Department to stop discriminating against naturalized citizens who volunteer to serve in the U.S. Armed Services as part of a program designed to attract immigrants with certain specialized skills. U.S. District Court has ruled that the Pentagon may not uh, have uh, discriminate against soldiers who are naturalized citizens and put them under, quote, continuous monitoring and security checks. Finally, today's a good cleaning day. I'm forever blowing for a bubble bath. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, we we have some, uh, before we get into the story about Michael Avenatti, I wanted to tell you this, some really sad news to report from our home station in New York City, 107.5 WBLS. Um, New York City radio and news giant Bob Slade has passed away from kidney disease. Wow. Um, yeah, it's really sad. Uh, Mr. Slade was a voice in the African-American community. And uh, New York City leaders, Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, are truly saddened by his passing. Of course, we send our condolences to the Slade family. Yeah, you know, uh, really to his family, who was obviously much closer to him than all of us. But you talk about one of the giants of radio, man. Bob Slade was was a, a, such a person of integrity. Yeah. Bob Slade yeah. helped so many young people break into radio, understand what radio really, really was, man. Bob Slade in the city of New York was a giant, man. And I mean, that guy right there, man, was just a solid, solid brother. And I'm pretty sure his his wife, if he had children, you know, I don't know him personally, but I know they got to be heartbroken. But whoever you are, if you are in the family of Bob Slade, know that he lived his life as a man of integrity. Integrity is the best way to describe him. Not only talented, but just integrity, man. Just a great, solid brother through and through, man. Our condolences go out to the Slade family. Absolutely, Steve. Thank Mm. you for that. All right, so we're going to switch gears here. Uh, Attorney Michael Avenatti, uh, Steve, has been in the news quite a bit lately. First of all, he represented uh, Stormy Daniels. And then most recently, R. Kelly's alleged sex abuse victims. Uh, Federal prosecutors in New York now have charged Avenatti in an alleged scheme to extort Nike over allegations of misconduct by employees. 
Prosecutors say he was representing an amateur basketball player and demanded a one and a half million dollar payment or he'd reveal bribes Nike had given to the families of multiple players. He also wanted the company to pay him 15 to 25 million dollars to conduct an internal investigation. Wow. This Ooh. Guy. You know, I man, this Extortion? is Extortion? So- and Stormy Daniels has come out and released a tweet that she's not it? surprised. What? That she expects other things to be uncovered about him. Mm. I mean, she went that angle right you there. Threw him under the bus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, all of this is kind of messy. I just met him, as a matter of fact, last week. You did. Week. Yeah, at a restaurant. He came up to me and shook my hand. Said he was a big fan. Don't say nothing else to him right now. Well, I ain't tweet nothing, so. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, listen, coming up at 34 after the hour, an interesting thought. Robert Mueller just showed the Democrats that you got to beat Trump the old-fashioned way. All right? We'll Mm. talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, we all know that special counsel Robert Mueller's report found that there was no collusion from the president (laughs) with Russia during the 2016 election. Many people believe that the president is not going to be impeached now and what the Democrats should do, this is what they should do, what they successfully did in the midterms and won the House. Remember, the Dems ran a against Trump's health care and tax policies last year. Okay, so that's what they did. Mm-hmm. That's what they're saying the Democrats need to do. Stick to health care and its tax policies. Run against those. There are so many issues like Trump's fondness for dictators and uh, the white nationalist fond- fondness for him, which continues to disturb people. Uh, Trump's trade war is unnerving our farm states. Democrats had plenty to say about Trump's border wall and his horrific policy of refugee child separation. Uh, The people, it doesn't seem, Steve, that the people, uh, they don't seem to care so much about Mueller's report. What impacts people's everyday lives are what they care about, like health care, like, yeah. You know, this whole thing about collusion. Okay, there was none. You know, I was really kind of twisted about the whole thing from the Outset, I didn't know what they were shooting for, but they seemed to be hell-bent on making it stick and making it happen. Okay, it wasn't there. The report says no collusion. Was there potential obstruction? They were saying Mueller punted the ball over to Attorney General Barr, who was a guy who has once said that this Mueller investigation should have been over with a long time ago. Now, he's saying, reports say that this guy, Attorney Barr, is saying, there's been no obstruction of justice. Yeah. Now, Trump is saying he thinks they can file the whole report and show it to the public. He don't care because he was cleared on his big points that there was no collusion. So this is a considerable victory for the president, according oh, yeah. to all sources that I've been watching on the news. Mm-hmm. It is. But that is it true. Is. Yeah. It's not a victory for us as the people. Nope. We can't vote on foreign policy. We don't know who talking with the Russians. When he do talk with the Russians, he make the lady that take the notes get out the room and throw away the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know what the hell is going on. Get your ass on. out of here. Yeah. We Give have me no idea. Give me them papers. So he drained the swamp. His new creatures in the swamp. So how can we look nice? Makeup was on right and good. That eyelashes wasn't falling off. Machine. She didn't look frustrated, though. She always looked frustrated. Mm-mm. No, she, she can she come out and talk relieved. That's all. Today, today, Tommy, she looked like she <laughs> was winning, man. Got some sleep. And, and did you notice when um, President Trump was speaking, he was more subdued. He was more humble mm-hmm. today. He was like, mm-hmm. I don't think any other president should have to go through this. Yeah. Boy, he who? wasn't aggravated and upset, Boy, uh, humble, defensive. Humble. Or... Yeah, he don't do humble good at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Boy, but he plays the game yeah, he's very active. well. He's such a chess player in this whole thing. But you know what they're saying too, though? They're saying the Democrats, you know, as they campaign and they're going and having all mm-hmm. these town hall meetings and talking to all these people, people don't care about the Mueller report. No. They don't care about Russia. They care about their money, health care, their mortgage, their mm-hmm. jobs. They just don't care about stuff like that. So the Democrats need to focus on that. Yes, yeah, they do. Listen the to the people. Administration 
wants to knock down and completely get rid of Obamacare, the Affordable Act. They want to get rid of the whole thing now, which would be his other campaign promise. Yeah. All he's trying to do now is keep the campaign promise. I got rid of the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. I got these taxes knocked Mm -hmm. down. And there was no collusion. Yeah, you get that mm-hmm. wall, and he's done everything he promised. And then he's a sure win for 2020. But, man, I'm telling y'all, these people love this guy. Yeah. They but, do, Steve. And Democrats should stick together like the Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> they, they should. All right, we got to move on. Uh, up next, it is the nephew with his prank phone call for today. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I just can't do church. Mm. But right now, Uh, mm -hmm. but right now, uh, Nephew Tommy is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us today, Nev? Well, it's it's, it's, it's tax time, Shirley, you know. Uh So can I claim your kids? I mean, that ain't asking a whole lot to nobody. It's not. I'm with you. I need some more kids. <laughs> you know, you just want to, you know, you just want to get your stuff lined up, yeah. man. Where you ain't got yeah. to pay no money. Mm-hmm. Can I claim your kids? Heard this year they going for six feet. Can I claim your kids? Let's run it, cat. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm trying to reach uh, uh, Devin. Devin. Yes, this is right. Hey, Devin, how you doing, man? My name is uh Curtis, man. Curtis. I was trying to reach out to you. You, uh, you, your, your, your son, uh, he plays uh, uh basketball with my nephew, man. Uh, your son is the one that's on the on the Blazers Little League basketball team, right? Yeah, yeah, he plays for the Blazers. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, with my boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything good, man. You know they got a game Saturday and everything. I I seen you a couple times, man, at the game. I don't know if you remember me, man. Uh. Light skinned brother, about about six foot. Yeah, I'm, I probably met you. I probably met you. You know, I'd be so intense with the game. But yeah, what's what's going on? Um, uh, well, actually, man, I wanted to holler at you about about your son, man. Um, you you um, do, are you are you are you working right now? Are you currently working? Am I am I working? But like, yeah, I am working. Actually, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you have a, you have a steady job, is what I'm asking. I mean, yeah. What you what you getting at though? Like, you know, I, I I thought you were calling about the basketball team, like uniforms. I know we got a game Saturday. You know, sometimes they want donation for sneakers and all that. Like, you know. No, no, what, no, what, no, what no, they, no. What I was asking. So, so I mean, you you got a regular nine to five job you go to all the time? Yeah, I got a nine to five. I mean, things is kind of crazy, but. Hours is kind of short, but you know I still I still work. I mean, what was going on? You need a job or something? No, no, no. Um, I'm just checking, man. See, what I wanted to get at you about, man, is seeing uh, are you gonna are you gonna claim your son uh, on your income tax this year? Hold on, bro. Now you said, am I gonna claim my son on my taxes this year? Right. I mean, like you you know, as as a dependent. Bro, you asking some real personal questions now. You know, like we, you, you the guy that you just said you know me from the basketball team that my son play on Blazers. You know, and now you done jump from the Blazers to do I claim my son on my taxes and do I have a, a steady income? I mean, like you know, yeah, I, I got I got a steady income and I'm claiming my son. What, 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 I mean. What you trying to get at, bro? Well, well, see, man, what I was thinking, uh, you know, I just wanted to read. You seem like a cool dude when I saw you at the gym, man. What I was going to ask you, bro, is, you know, see, right now, man, when I get through with my taxes and stuff, I'm going to have to owe about $800. But now, see, if I claim a child as my dependent, man, they going to give me about twenty two, twenty three hundred. 2300 You see what I'm saying? And what I wanted to get at you about, man, is, you know, you let me claim as my son, you know, so I can go and get this good hold money. Up, bro, hold up, bro. Bro, I mean, with all due respect, bro, you talking about you want to claim my son on taxes. Hold what? on, bro. I don't even know you. Uh, you know, you're talking about you seen me at my son's basketball game. You might be the police for all I know, bro. You sound like the police. No, 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 no. It ain't, it ain't, ain't nobody going to come at you sideways like that, man. I ain't, I ain't trying to come like what I'm trying to say, man. No, they trying to hit me up for this eight hundred. Well, see, I can get twenty three hundred, man. I I kick you down two fifty. 
You understand what I'm saying, man? Everybody 50. cool. 250? <laughs> you crazy? Now you sound like a <laughs> joke, bro. Because now you're insulting me. You're telling me you want to claim my <laughs> style for some <laughs> where you owe money. I don't even know you, fool. So I can make 250. Bro, I ain't trying to be on no <laughs> bro. But when I claim my kids, I'm getting the same exact price you getting. I'm getting 2300 too. So what the <laughs> I look like taking $200 from <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but I'm the one stuck over here paying the 800, man. I'm just acting like, asking you to look out for a brother, man. You say? Look out. Yeah. Look out. You know my tech been cut from 40 hours a week to 13 hours a week, and I still got these little asking me for Jordan. Michael Jordan ain't never put a dime. That's why I'm trying to hook you up with 250, man. Damn, you don't even see a good thing when it's coming at you, bro. Bro, I don't know what the you talking about, bro. No 250, bro. When I claim these two little I'm getting twenty three hundred dollars a piece, bro. What you think I'm gonna take two fifty from you for? I don't even know you like that. So man, you ain't got it. You ain't you ain't got a trip, man. I understand if you was my bro, you my people. You know, maybe we could do a little something. I can understand that. But bro, you ain't gonna give me no two fifty when I'm getting the same thing they offering you twenty three hundred. This government money, bro. So what is I'm supposed to do? What am I supposed to uh, do, Devin? Tell me that. I mean, bro, what you supposed to do is go have you a C, claim that little every year. And you'll get what I get for these little that I'm feeding and clothing every day. That's what you're going to have to do. My hours done got cut from 40 to 15 hours a week. I had to go pick me up a little side hustle. You understand? You got to change your ways. You out here trying to get me locked up for a government scam. Bro. All I'm trying to do, man, is get this 800 off my back, dog. That's all I'm trying. Man, ain't nobody trying to get no trouble, man. Bro, hey. you still talking about getting you 800 and getting me locked up. Now, you got me I'm out here working hard to support my kids, man. Man, I ain't, so I ain't finna sit here and no go through this with support, you no man. more, man. I ain't finna sit here and go through this with you no more. Is you gonna help me with this money or not? Bro, I ain't helping you with bro. No, I need... when I see you on Saturday, bro, I'm gonna you up, bro. I promise you, bro. I need your son's social security number right now. That's what I need. Bro, let me tell you something, bro. What you look like, bro? You said you're a light-skinned and you're going to stop six foot. Bro, when I see you, when I step in that gymnasium, bro, I'm on your Bro, you I'm ain't on my, you them ain't on my, blazers, on blaze them Lakers, bro. You better bring that damn social security number. I think it's a game. I'm going to come find them. Okay, cool. I got one more thing I need to say to you. Is you listening to me? I don't even know why this is on my phone, bro. Why well, I'm even talking to this fool. I got one more thing I need to say to you, man. Is you listening to me? Say your last statement you want on your tombstone, bro. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked, baby. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> this nephew Tommy, man. What's up, Devin? <laughs> What's up, fool? You got me out here going crazy, Hey, bro. man, you got, hey, do you got a boy that you work with named Yeah, crazy Put me up to this, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm a big <laughs> when I get to work tomorrow, man. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. We need good daddies in the world, brother. Man, thank you, bro. Yeah. Hey, one more thing, man. I got to ask you. You got to tell me, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Man, Steve Harvey Morning Show, brother. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. I'm a big <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got about seven, eight kids. Can I claim some of y'all? Nah. I got you way got... bigger problems than that. <laughs> I need some other candle right off. Can I claim your flame? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Saturday, April 13th, it is me and some more. We are at the Keswick Theater in Glenside, Pennsylvania. Tickets are on sale right now. We got two shows. We got a 7 o'clock show and a 10 o'clock show. You do not want to miss it. Me and the legendary some more. Keswick Theater, Glenside, Pennsylvania. That is Saturday, April the 13th. April the 19th, Knoxville, Tennessee. Me and Bruce Bruce. We hooking up. We at the Knoxville Civic Auditorium. 8 o'clock show, one show only. April 19th, Friday night, Knoxville, Tennessee. Me and Bruce Bruce. Tickets available at all Ticketmaster outlets. They on sale right now. Stupid is coming to town. Yes, and he's right here, too. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, up next, today's we Strawberry Letter. To <laughs> right. <laughs> today's Strawberry Letter. Subject, I just can't do church. All right, we'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Time now for today's Strawberry Letter, guys. And if you need advice on relationships, sex, dating, work, parenting, and more, please, please, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM. And then click Submit Strawberry Letter. We can be reading your letter just like we're going to read this one today, live on the air, (laughs) right here, right now. Let's go. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, I I just can't do church. Uh, Dear Stephen Shirley, I am writing you because I need your advice on how to talk to my mom. My mother is a very religious, church-going woman, and I don't share her love for church. I lie to her every Sunday when she asks if I have been to church. I am a Christian, and I believe in God, and I thank him daily for everything that I am blessed with. But I despise church. I don't think church is necessary to have a relationship with God because so many of the churches today are full of pulpit pimps that manipulate women for sex and money. My mom's church is no exception. Her church is full of sheep that follow this pulpit pimp blindly, and then after church, they are the biggest hypocrites and most hateful people. I prefer to save my soul by praying in private instead of tithing to these pastors so they can buy expensive suits and cars. Of course, I can't get my mother to see it from my perspective, so I stopped debating the issue with her. It's easier to lie and tell her that I'm visiting other churches on Sunday, when instead I'm watching a 30-minute service on TV and then heading over to IHOP for pancakes. I do have a conscience, though, and I don't want to lie anymore. By the way, I am 37 years old and single. Two pastors at my mom's church have hit on me in the past, and I never told my mom because she's so far gone, she'd blame it on me some kind of way. How can I start a real conversation with her about this without telling, without her telling me that I'm going straight to hell if I don't get my tail back in the church? Please help. Woo. Yeah, <sighs> this is a tough one. It sounds like your mom, you know, is old school. She's brought up in the church, and she doesn't want to hear anything else but that. Um, I, I am glad that you you go to um, you, you go to the TV church, I should say, and watch that for thirty minutes on Sunday, and you have your own relationship with God, which is the most important thing. You say you prefer to do your praying in private and all of that. You do have a relationship with God. You do know God, so that's important that you have that. Um, as far as advice on you talking to your mom. Um, can you talk to your mom about other things? I mean, how is your relationship otherwise? I mean, sometimes you just have to sit them down and just let them know. You're 37. You are 37. And at some point, you know, you should be able to have a grown-up conversation with your mom. Respectfully, though, I say. I always say do it respectfully um, because, you know... She's still your mom and you're still her child in her eyes. I know that because I am a mom. But, I mean, you do need to know that we as Christians, we are the church. We are the church. So saying you despise the church, the place we go and worship God, and uh, that's a bit strong in my opinion. Uh, The people who are in the church, they're humans. They're sinners. Uh, You know, they fall short. We're all imperfect. The church is like a hospital for sick Christians who are trying to get their life together. They go, they confess, they repent their sins. They do all of that. That's what goes on in church. And and, uh, that's why we're called to not put our faith in man, but to put our faith in God. I'm sure your mom has told you that. I'm sure she has. So I'm just asking you, please don't condemn all churches. None of them are perfect. Uh, and, and no one's perfect. There are some good ones out there. There's some good churches out there. Maybe just your mom's church isn't for you. Uh, you you do watch a church uh, for 30 minutes, you say, on TV. Maybe you could go there. I mean, there are some ch- good churches out there that are going to feed whatever you need, give you what you need. And I just say don't let your bad experiences completely turn you off. Give God another chance. Give your mom. Give the people of God another chance. And sit your mom down and just have an honest grown-up conversation with her about how you feel. Try to get through to her. Steve? Shirley, uh-huh. I don't think you could have given a more complete answer. Just do you, though, Boo. See, Boo wants to do <laughs> Come on, Boo. something else. <laughs> See, Boo, I, I, I ain't that good a Christian. I'm not in the soul-saving business. <laughs> If you tell me that you're looking forward to going to hell, 
I say congratulations. What? I say congratulations and walk away in case you try to go to hell now. I don't like talking to people like this who say stuff that they despise the church. I got, you know, what I hear about the people. Shirley said it best of all. I can't top nothing Shirley said. It. Shirley nailed it. Church is for sick people. Everybody's sick. Ain't nobody perfect. Now you mad because you got hit on by two of the pastors down there. You don't want to tell your mama because your mama crazy. Wow. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Come on now, here we go. Yeah. You know that there's church people. Shirley said, "Sit down and have an adult conversation." You know how this conversation gonna go? It's gonna get all back to the Bible. You ain't finna have no regular conversation with no old committed Christian. Everything they say gonna get you right on back to what she wants you to hear. And the majority of it's going to be true, but that ain't the conversation she want to have. So how do you talk to your mother? Augen? Augen. Cicero. Oh. Uh, Cicero, please. I, I, there it is. I, there I it didn't is, hear man. the R in Oregon. There it is. Know what no, you like. you Scarily, you're out. We... We are here today, mm. and we are not supposed to be here today, because today is Tuesday. That's right. We were here yesterday doing complaints, but mm-hmm. today we're doing strawberry letters. That's right. The title of this letter is, <laughs> and I repeat this letter verbatim, I just can't do church. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know who the hell she thought she was writing into, <laughs> but we here. And uh. when we come back, the title of my sermon is, I I can't do church. Hold on, let me change it. The title of my sermon today is going to be, you can't do church. Mm. I can't do you. <laughs> I, know. Oh, I know that's right. Uh, oh, wait all right. <laughs> Just do you, boo. All we'll right, be look. We'll right back <laughs> with today's sermon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You At 23 after church. the hour. I can't do you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Or I should I say Reverend? Come on back. <laughs> Uh, let's recap today's Strawberry Letters subject. I just can't do church. I just, I just can't. This woman wrote in today. <laughs> yes, sir. Said, Dear Steve and Shirley, I, I need advice. Mm. My mother, very religious church going. I've been to church all my life, mm-hmm. but I, I, I despise church. Because I don't think church is necessary. Have a right. relationship with God. <laughs> uh, who is you? Uh. To be making such an accusation of claims. Uh, they are full of poor pit pimps that manipulate women for sex and for money. Not all churches are like that. You need to understand that there's some good men of God out there. Some good women of God out there. That ain't in it for the money. It ain't in it for the sex. That's where you're so wrong. But now you think that they are the biggest hypocrites. Most hateful people. I Mm. prefer to save my soul by praying in private instead of tithing to these pastors. You done let the devil trick you? Devil got you thinking you ain't got to leave your house? You watching the sermon on TV? Well, that's the same thing Steve do. But that ain't got nothing to do. Steve ain't wrote no letter in. <laughs> Steve already know he ain't going to hell with no damn strawberry letter. Talking about he despised the church. Devil and tricked you and got you to write in to the wrong person. You ain't no Reverend Motown going to be in on him here. Now let us begin with right. the sermon today. All right. What's your sermon now? I, I, you can't do church. You can't do church. And I can't do you. 
<laughs> and I can't do it. Yes, sir. You. All right. Wow. I, 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 I can't do you if you ain't here. You can't hear me if you ain't sitting out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go on. You've been watching TV 30 minutes on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Watching TV, then heading over to IHOP for pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I sure would like to know what IHOP you pancaking at. Mm-hmm. So I could bring the word to you over there. You don't like going to church, but you like going to IHOP. <laughs> I hopped the International House of Pancakes. I had a church name, I hopped the International House of Prayer. Woo. It was called I Hop 2. Well, I hop over there and your pancakes will be prayer. International House of Prayer is what I named the church. International well, House of Prayer. Man. You 37 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Single. Yeah. Ain't got no kids. Nobody. Ain't got no family. Right. Got nobody to look out for you. Mm-hmm. Now you done wrote in a letter. <laughs> Talking about the church ain't this. I can't do church. Well, you can't do church and I can't do you. Right. Maybe you need to come to church. Yeah. Get one of these fine choir boys. That's right. I'm talking about ones that's in the male quartet. That's right. Brother Cleophas de Salomo the third is available. <laughs> Did Cleophas you say Cleophas de Salomo the third is available? Wow. He only I fifty-eight years old. He ain't been married either. I didn't know he was still with us. <laughs> he ain't got no kids. Wow. Now walk kind of bad, but you ain't got no man at all. De Salomo. Hmm. Brother Cleavers, uh, he walked bad. He was coming down the aisle in the church vent. Uh, pop fell through the floor. <laughs> he broke his knee <laughs> off. He it was coming went. down the aisle at the church, and he stepped in the vent, <laughs> and it snapped his knee back. Now, that's why he walked bad. Reverend. But, that's, but yeah. he's available. He's that's a, a lot of good men at our church. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Brother Junior's down here at the church. Amen. Brand new member. <laughs> Boy, we're flying today. Just a lovely young man. That, that He's 39 years old. He's available. Has no children. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. you can be dating Brother Junior down here at the church. Come on, girl. Fine young man. <laughs> Dressed <hands> nice. <laughs> Everybody, you know, does. He's already done a cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he ain't full of nothing, Pastor. He ain't full yeah, of nothing. Yeah, he done got it all out. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> I said, come on. Hey, uh, brother Junior's a fine young yeah. man. Just be down there, Junior. And he wants to go come in. I had a, 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 a private conversation. He came to my office for consulting the other day. Oh. Did he? Counseling. Yeah, came in there for counseling. Mm-hmm. And uh, telling me that the pastor, I'm ready to come on in. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm tired mm-hmm. of being mm. out here. How do I stop being mm. the way I'm is? What you telling, Pastor? I told him you got to stop being the way you is. <laughs> Sound advice, Pastor. You know what? Uh, hello. <laughs> that's, that's that's I, it. You know, yeah. I let Lord use me. <laughs> Hey, I went on and I told Brother Junior, I said, Brother Junior, you can stop, but you got to stop to stop. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, that's deep. That's, that's deep. Boy, that's one more time, Say it one I more time. said, if you want to stop, you got to stop to stop. Ooh, preach, on, Pastor. Man. Preach. You can't keep going on if you don't go on no more. Ooh, woo. How you going to go on if you don't go ahead? Huh? <laughs> you better Come on now. You better you shut up. You gonna go home. You better no, go How you going to go on if you don't go ahead? Woo. Thank How you, you going to lay back if you don't fall down? Amen. Donovan McClurkin uh. said, we fall down, but we get up. Well, yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Once I fall down, I lay down, roll over, wallow in it. Ah. I get it all under my armpits. Uh, I like it down there, muddy. Yeah, that, that reminds me of a song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And if it don't shine, just see whatever part you can see. Wow. Mm. That's our sermon. You you. can't do church. (laughs) 
I can't do you. <laughs> All right, guys. Look, we thank you, Pastor. We got to get out of here. Email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. Coming up in 10 minutes, NCAA Sweet 16, baby, right Uh-oh. after oh. this. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, uh, Steve, so Junior's up now with the NCAA Sweet 16. Come on, Junior. All right, uh, have you been watching the tournament? Uh? Yeah, I've been watching a few of them. I can't watch all of them. You know, I'm working. You know, uh, but, but this good. Watching. This is not good enough, enough to know what's going on. That's all I'm saying. Mm. I know. Well, I know. Well, well, we, well, what you just go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Why are we going ahead? Trying to figure out. You know, your damn segment. Oh, what did you want about my level of understanding? Uh, well, I'll tell I you what to, games I saw. I need you to pick, Unc. I need you to pick. It's Sweet 16. We're trying to get down to the Elite Eight. Pick what? Is, we're at the 16. Who playing who? Duke is playing Virginia. Number one Duke. versus number four. Okay, you're going to go with Duke. <laughs> okay. Just and Duke. lose the attitude, Steve. No, they got well, me but dog. Virginia, but I'm going to tell you something, though, man. Okay, Tennessee still in. Don't go ahead. Let me. Let yeah. me oh, you want to do that? Go I got ahead. you covered right. on that. Yeah, right, you got, you go got Purdue and Tennessee. They playing. Oh, uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. That's that's three. Hell yeah. yeah. Come on, Tennessee. Ooh, we need Tennessee. Come on, Tennessee. Okay, uh, here go a good game right here for you. LSU at Michigan State. That's going to be hard, man. I really, really want LSU to do it, though. They can. I'm going to say LSU because I want them to. But boy, that damn Michigan boy, State, they got a yeah, call. Yeah, man. He ain't no joke, man. That, he ain't no that's joke. That's an upset right there. Huh? That's an upset. LSU? Yeah, upset. Well, it's oh. time for upset. It's time for an upset. These yeah. are twos and threes. But, but, but now Michigan State got bumped out last year, so they going to be coming hard. And a lot of them boys is back. So I want LSU, but it's going to be Michigan State. Number one, man. Gonzaga versus number four, Florida State. And you man, know Florida I can't, State. I, it's man. hard to go get Florida State. Man, let me tell you. No, it ain't hard to go against Florida State because Gonzaga ain't no joke now. They no. got shooters. Gonzaga has shooters every year. But I'm going with Florida State because I think they got some length. They got some length and some athleticism that can go with that shooting of Gonzaga. Gonzaga's a well-coached team. But I'm going to go with Florida State just because I want them so bad. Number three, Texas Tech versus number two, Michigan. Michigan. Oh, they waste no time. Yeah, okay. they waste no time yeah. with that. You didn't really have to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right, number three, Houston versus number two, Kentucky. Oh. Here we it's go. It's twos and threes. Kentucky, dog. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, I saw Houston. They nice. Oh, they yeah, they nice. nice. They real nice. They ain't been in it, though, since uh, Five Slammer Jammer. Houston Woo! ain't been back since then. And they, they just uh, they did good, man. But Kentucky, Lord Jesus. We going to see. We gonna see. Well, we we're just gonna, gonna see. see. I'm just telling you. All right, here you go. Here you go. North Carolina, number one. North versus, Carolina versus number five. North Auburn. Carolina. Okay, you ain't even wait. You ain't even <laughs> who is that? Who, who is they playing? Auburn. Auburn. Oh, yeah. that's Chuck School. Yeah. yeah. Chuck. Dennis well, Smith versus different. Chuck, baby. Because that's what let me we tell got. you something. They don't even look. Well, they won their last game, and they look like they lost. The coach had to tell them. Y'all, y'all won. They didn't lose the game. Y'all won what? the game. Y'all won. Mm. Yeah, know. the coach had to tell. No, they was just depressed looking, man. That ain't that ain't the swagger you walk off the floor with. No, oh. sir. No, they're gonna get they gonna get mopped next. <laughs> That's it, Uncle. We got them all. So now who was you saying Duke was playing Virginia? I got news. Virginia for Tech. Y'all. Virginia Tech. I mean, I mean, Virginia Tech is strong though, man. But this boy Zion, he putting up some yeah. numbers. But I'm telling you, they almost that... lost, man. If the uh, referees UCF? had made the calls, uh, UCF would have beat uh, Duke, man. I'm sorry. That big boy, they got that 7'6". Uh, Ooh. You got a big taco? Taco Fall. <laughs> taco Fall, who can't oh jump. If he had any hops, Anything. he'd be hell on But he can't jump. But he's 7'6". Why has he had to jump? He can reach up there and kid. Yeah, yeah, he's 7'6". Dunk standing, standing on the ground. Well, he can't dunk, but he can grab the rim. Yeah, he, he really, he just, if he could just jump a little bit. Right. If he had a 20 inch vertical. Yes. Well, there it is, Uncle. That's your final I mean, eight right yeah. there. Your lead eight right there, Uncle. Duke. Yeah, that's, that's who's going to uh, be in it, man. That's my prediction. Duke, I'm yeah, sorry for y'all for Houston, but I mean, I wish Houston why, would win. Why, but we'll see. We'll but see. But who they what playing happens. again? That's all right. They're playing Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, well, okay, well. And that's what. Yeah, nice try. Yeah, we. we <laughs> I'm believing. I'm going with Houston. I'm well, riding. You go with Houston. Y'all, y'all just I'm going with Houston because y'all live there. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't give a damn about it. Come that. on, Gresham. 
Okay. Who? Gresh, powerful. Right there. You got anything out of Cleveland you want to uh, no, brag about? No, we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't got no college in Cleveland until Cleveland State. Yeah, no, like, they small ass school. We can't get no Final Four though. We can't get no tall You ready man for the NFL? Cause four. that's the biggest you talk. Damn, right now. bet you, boy. We how we gonna get in there? That tallest player six four. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie though. We went home so fast. Prairie View was there. We was there on two. We back in class on Wednesday. You yeah. ain't have to say that, Junior. Well, that's what yeah. happened. Damn, Junior. <laughs> well, you know, they, they Dang, Junior. Put, you know, they you cut your own school. Well, dog, that's what happened. You know, I, I was proud real. of PV. But I you was know, rocking man, my purple. I'm proud of them. Look, man, I'm they proud. good for the swag. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. They played they hard. Really good. But, but they, they just bad. don't have enough. They, you're not going to get enough talent kids at one swag school because there's too many hopes and promises with the mother school. They paying them kids. Come on, y'all. Stop. Yeah. Hey, you know, you know, ain't pay, ain't, we ain't paying. They got pay. alumni. They give them money and stuff. Yeah. Y'all know what's happening. Let's cut all this. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop this. <laughs> you know, if the college don't pay it, the alumni going to do it. They're going to give you a job. Your job going to pay way more than you're supposed to make. You're going to get a car somewhere, you know. Do you think college cool. ball players, do you think college athletes should get paid? I, th- I think that college athletes should be paid to come Period. to school. All they of should them. get something. I do. All of them I that do. generate revenue. Yeah. They ba- base- basketball and football generates revenue. Yes, it yeah. does. I think the kids yes, should be paid because they have to sacrifice their whole college career to play them sports. All right, we got to move on, guys. Coming up at the top of the hour, Cardi B is suing vloggers for defamation of character, and uh, DMX's valet car, a uh, valet, and a big old car mix-up. We'll talk about that right after this. With my car, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Cardi B, uh, Steve, is suing vloggers for defamation. You can say vloggers. what you want. Mm-hmm, vloggers, yeah. You can say what you want. Uh, you can say what you want about Cardi B in private, but once you post it online, she's just coming for you. That's just it, plain and simple. Latasha K and uh, Starmine, is that mm-hmm. it? Star Marie Ebony Jones. Mm-hmm. Star Marie Ebony Jones, love that name. Or finding this out the hard way, people. Latasha K runs the vlog, and uh, she's posted 23 videos over the last 23 months alleging that Cardi has been doing drugs. She even said that culture could be born with intellectual disabilities because of it. Meanwhile, what? What? the baby. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah. This is crazy. I know. Let me finish. Uh, meanwhile, um, uh, Jones posted a video accusing Cardi B of doing Molly and cocaine, engaging in prostitution and spreading herpes. Wow. The two even combined what? forces on a video with more allegations of STDs and hooking. Cardi has filed a defamation lawsuit against both women. In the paper paperwork, Cardi says that she's never been a prostitute, never used cocaine or molly, and doesn't have herpes. She gave them a chance to retract their statements, but they refused. Cardi okay, wants cool. an injunction to delete cool. the videos they posted. Let's go. Steve. You know, she can, she can get a, a, a TIA on that. But what I hope she does What's is... What's a TRA? Uh, temporary restraining, restraining order. Restraining order. TR, uh, what do they call it when you have to take down something? It's called... Uh, take it down? No, it's called... I forgot. I forgot the legal term. I've done mm-hmm. Oh, cease time. and desist? Yeah, something like that. Oh, but okay. what, what I'm hoping happens is, for Cardi B's sake, I hope that Cardi B can get some justice in terms of payback see it what's ugly about the internet is <clears throat> they can say anything they want to about you if you get an order to have it taken down it's already been picked up 15 20 other places yeah you can't spend your day chasing this garbage so you allow it to exist but the originators of it if you can bring them to court and get some type of uh uh, uh restitution Rest? Some type of justice for it, you know, uh, some jail time, a heavy fine, let you lose your right to, to vlog or whatever it is, mm-hmm. your, or, or the money you made off of your post, because that's how they make money. They post this stuff, 
they get views and they're paid by YouTube or Facebook a certain amount of money because they take in advertising. It's perfectly legal to do, but what shouldn't be illegal is you allowed to just, uh, you know, discriminate against somebody, say mean, hateful, hurtful things about a person's family. That's right. If That's it's not wrong. true, man, you should not be allowed to print it. Let's and we've gone crazy child. with this. This is oh, really Man, bad. you got to be kidding, mess with this girl's baby. So hateful, so hateful. And then they sitting up there, sitting down, and they join together like they a real mm-hmm. correspondence team. And so now, man, I think this young lady, I think Cardi B has, I don't know the girls who did it, mm-hmm. but I can understand Cardi B being upset about it. Uh, yeah, more than upset. Yeah. All of that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Talk about my baby. I mean, you know what, man? It's so hateful, man, when people just write what they want to write about you, and they don't even know you, and they don't have the facts, and they just print lies. But uh, what gives them the right? I don't understand why they, I I just, I don't get it. Going after people I don't get it. I don't get this. Man, if I could tell you the phone call I got the other day. Really? I'd be just going, man, I just called my lawyer and said, hey, man, just handle this, though. Wow, see. It's some evil, sick, hateful. evil, mm-hmm. hateful imps mm-hmm. yeah. in this world. Yeah. And I call them imps because they work for Satan. Mm. And they do his bidding all day long. They're just evil, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, in other entertainment news, Steve, DMX and his crew accidentally drove off in someone else's Corvette. <laughs> Apparently, DMX mm. and his camp were at the W Hotel in Los Angeles. Uh, they went to retrieve their cars around 1 a.m. in the morning. A member of X's team asked the valet to get his car, his Corvette, but couldn't find the ticket. Now, normally, and we know that all know this is true, a valet won't hand over a car without a receipt. But since they recognized DMX, they got what they thought was his car. And uh, DMX took the Corvette, headed to a club on Sunset Strip. Meanwhile, the actual owner called the police to report, report the car stolen um, after the valet confessed Damn. to the mis- mix-up. Okay, after that. So, there you go. What happened to my car? Thankfully. <laughs> I parked the car here. <laughs> I had a car. I parked it with y'all. I come back. No car at all. What y'all really doing with my car? <laughs> <laughs> what you really doing with my car? <laughs> I came in a vet. I parked it with Ramon. I come back. No car is gone. <laughs> what you really do with my car? <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, uh, thank you for that, Tommy. That was good. That was uh, the, good. the valet <laughs> also knew exactly where X and the crew were headed. The police were able to get the car back, so that turned out well. Thank God. Yeah, he just got. We're going out. to the strip club. Leave. We're making it rain. When, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, X. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Has that, ever happened? Has that ever happened to anybody? You got the wrong car? Yeah. Somebody oh, no, I ain't having it. I got in the other no. car because I wanted it. No. Oh. <laughs> no. You what? <laughs> oh, no, I, it didn't happen. I got in another car because I wanted it. <laughs> I've never been that high drunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out of my, uh, I know my car, dogs. You can't hand me no car. But two no. identical well, cars. What if they're identical? Kind of car, yeah. Well, identical. Yeah, I can understand you getting the wrong car, but I'm gonna know. I know my car smell. Yeah. I know the mm-hmm. stuff. I got little stuff in my car. I'll let you know, it's my. First of all, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing in my car. Right. It's, Let's see. Ain't nothing it, on the seat. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing in the ashtray. Yeah. Uh, your car always I got a car seat in mine. I know mine when I see it. I know. Yeah, I, even if it's the same, exact same on the outside, you know your car on the inside. You do. Oh, yeah. 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 Dog, yeah. soon as I get in it. Yeah. Exactly. Because, uh, like yeah. I tell you, I'm telling you, there's nothing in my car. But uh, your car be parked in a specific spot anyway. Well, you know, probably usually really ain't got to go get mine. I can see mine. <laughs> you can see it, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's beyond about this. By the front door. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, like I said, they got the car back. It was, it was, um, you know, all good in the end, taken care of. Is he driving better now? Who? DMX? DMX. You know, DMX rode all on the sidewalk. Y'all don't remember that? DMX was tearing up stuff in New York. Y'all don't yeah, remember He can't get in no more trouble. You know yeah, that. Yeah, he's got to tread lightly yeah. now. Yes. Um, uh, coming up. I'm good. <laughs> we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Wow, Nick Cannon shoots his shot at Rihanna. Nick Cannon is a man who knows what he wants. Well, right now, uh, that seems to be Rihanna. Hmm. Really? Yeah, yes. Nick. I'm mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mad at you. <laughs> I'm In mad. case you missed it, you may have missed this one. Uh, Rihanna posted a series of Instagram pictures of herself wearing this high cut metallic dress. She was promoting her new Fenty beauty product called Body Lava. Uh, once she put up the last image, Nick commented, I never wanted to be a dress more before this moment in my life. <laughs> Before this moment Boy. in life. Yeah, go on, Nick. Go on, Nick. Go on, Nick. <laughs> I love that. Uh, no, several commenters congratulated him on shooting his shot. It seems like uh, she's not interested, though. Rihanna isn't. Rihanna is allegedly involved with Saudi businessman Hassan Jamil. She, they've been together for about two years now. So, oh, Nick, well. you keep shooting, though. <laughs> keep shooting. Fire your you cannon. Never know. <laughs> Fire your cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Trying, man. No, no, this boy got some other kind of money. Oh, the is uh, it about money though? The Saudi. What? Well, she's in a Can relationship. It a, it's yeah, it's it about, about she's money? in a relationship. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Hassan Jamil. Yeah. It ain't always about money. Huh? Is he a billionaire? Is it? I'm sure. No, no, it ain't always about money, Tom. You're right. Yeah. Yo, what you in here for? <laughs> uh, we talking about Nick. That's what I'm talking about. We talking about Nick. We talking about the beautiful Rihanna. It ain't always well, about Nick money. Got money. Exactly. Y'all stop. <laughs> what? Stop. Let me read. The, let me read this I last mean, he line. He ain't got again. no stop. billion. He ain't got no bees. No, no. no listen She's to me. allegedly. Listen to me. Listen to me. I got some money, but this boy she with. Yeah. Mm-mm. Saudi businessman, mm-hmm. Saudi businessman Hassan Jamil for two years. <laughs> mm. They're in a relationship. Jeez. How much he worth, Shirley? I, it doesn't say. I'm sure a lot, though. You can't know what they worth. They don't pay taxes over there. They be laughing. I was at a meeting over there. I told one of them, they said, uh, the richest man in the world is uh, Jeff Bezos, the dude that on Amazon. Mm-hmm. They start laughing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All of them? They start laughing. Wow. So their money is not, you don't know their number. No. That's that other money. So Rihanna the, the, man got that other no. money? The richest people in the world is over there. I, I don't care what nobody say. It's just not an argument. I'm not asking nobody. They over there. <laughs> How come I feel like for some reason my uncle going to pack up and just move over there? How come I feel like you're going to do that and not <laughs> and, and not ever come back? Do I, why do I feel this? Soon as somebody asks me, <laughs> ask you to what? Come over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, Tommy, your feeling is right. It's right. I'm telling you, he's leaving. He, he going to leave. Me to come over. Bet not to ask me. <laughs> what about why we on the air right now? <laughs> 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 We look up, you on a camel. Every time we look up, you on a camel on a pitch. Just ride. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't, Did you I don't hear really Junior? care for camels. Yeah. Did no, you? I didn't hear Junior. I said, Unc, what, what if they call right now while we on there? Would you leave? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what y'all You'll walk out on us in this job right now? Right now? Tommy. Oh, my like God. Like me huh? and you have never met. <laughs> no, never wow. Met. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, we'll be back with more of this ignorant <laughs> show <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, tell the people about sand and soul in the Dominican Republic. I can't wait. Well, y'all, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We're getting close, guys. <laughs> Come on. Please. Come on. We had a good time. Yes, we oh. did. What? Uh, Ask <laughs> anybody that went. That's an understatement. Oh, we had a good we time. There. That's an understatement. What are the dates, Carla? <laughs> oh, my birthday weekend, Marjorie Harvey's birthday weekend, October 10th through the 14th. We going to be kicking it. Woo! Yes. What I'm going to do down there for my girl for her birthday, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to get Dominican. crowned king. <laughs> king of the Dominican it. Republic. King down there. But it's October 10th. 
through the 14th, everybody. Sand and Soul. Incre- the artist will be performing is the one and only Anthony Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, Anthony yeah. Anthony Hamilton will be live at Sand and yeah. Soul. We got mm-hmm. the Tears of Joy comedy concert down there. That's going to be slamming. Tony Robbins uh, is a fool. That's about, boy. Yeah, Tony. we've got the uh, incredible Showtime at the Apollo night. Showtime. Yeah, that was a trip. I which see. was, was nice. Oh, hella Egg. laughs and funny. They yeah. got casinos. They got 24-hour free room service. Woo. All Woo. drinks are free. All food is free. Pizza. Everywhere you go, 13 swimming pools on property. Nice. 162 <laughs> swimming pools. Yeah. Just random. <laughs> Just everywhere. 97 restaurants. Oh. 59 balls. I've had half of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't go to the Dominican Republic to have pizza, but they have the best pizza oh, for real. on Man, the that planet. Pizza was, oh, my gosh. We it's ate it every night. every night. Every we single it night. Every it was night. that good. It was that good. Wow. I like oh, the hibachi so grill, too. Oh, that yeah. That was fun, too. Oh, yeah. Hibachi. Yeah, man, they had that a lot lunch. of... That was lunch. Now, I'm going to go to the special restaurant, the only restaurant that wasn't included uh-huh. in the uh, all-you-can... the all, the uh, all-inclusive part. That one restaurant had all of the white tablecloths in there and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, it was, was glass beautiful. you could see in it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to have dinner one night with my girl. Well, it's there. Marjorie's birthday. Of course yeah. you well, are. Well, i got to do something else, too. Yeah. I can't just put it in that fish bowl. <laughs> it's Sand and well, Soul, wait, October 10th uh, through the 14th, baby. Wait, Shirley, it's our birthday, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Carla. Hey, y'all, I received some bad news from my doctors today. What's wrong? Can't eat no more gluten. Are you serious? Yeah. So you're gluten free now? Too? Yeah, I can't eat no gluten. Oh well, they. I mean, this is L.A. They have gluten free everything. Yeah, but it don't taste good though. Everything I've ever had that had gluten in it, oh. it needed all the gluten put back in it. <laughs> so you could get the taste back. Yeah. Wow. Sand and Soul, y'all, join us. Go to uh, <laughs> steveharveysandandsoul.com. Get your information, y'all. Steve Harvey Sand and Soul. Want y'all come out and join us, man. Great prices. You can make payments. You can start making payments so you ain't got to pay all of it at once. 800-684-2825. 6824. 6824- 6824- Crazy. 25-1-800-684-2825. 800 800- 684 2825. Thank you. It sounds like he didn't hit the number. Hey, I'm about to to go play these. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sand and Soul, (laughs) October 10th through the 14th. Hopefully, we will see you there. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and Steve's closing remarks right after this. I'll be drunk here at night. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are. Last break of the day. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow is the Powerball, uh, $750 million yeah. at jackpot, stake. Huh? That is yeah. the jackpot. My and last it's a, day. Yeah. That's enough right there, baby. <laughs> but yeah. the payout, the payout is for if you, you know, get it in a lump sum, Yeah, I want Steve, the lump. Four, four sixty-five yes, point geez. five. That's it. 465 That's million. It. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's my last day. Million. Yeah. Okay. 400. Yeah, 65.5. No, 400. Mm-hmm. Oh. 400. Yeah, that's all I want. I'm going to tell Marjorie. <laughs> so what you going to hide the you other 65 lie, million? Yeah. Can you hide 65 million? I ain't saying I'm going to lie. Oh. You just, what you going to do? I just, just gonna I'm going to walk in the house with the 400 check. Oh, the sin of oh. omission. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, that's all it is. Mm. <laughs> feel how you want to feel about me. <laughs> hey, well, it's your money. <laughs> can we play together? How about that? Yeah. We, that would be some? fun, guys. Let's okay. buy some, Let's some tickets. Buy tickets. Yeah. But it's five of us. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but okay. let me ask y'all this, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, if we buy all these tickets together mm-hmm. and we hit, okay. can I get a fourth of them? <laughs> what kind of What are you talking that? about? <laughs> how you gonna bring, How you going to get a fourth and it's five people? I'll be there. <laughs> what math do you think we not doing? What what is that? What what? So that's a no. <laughs> Don't y'all buy some ungrateful ass. <laughs> we ungrateful. Hey, we ungrateful. You got more money than all of us. I'll be dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
All out of done for you. Oh, 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 really? All out of sacrifice for you. Oh, it's your mind. I can't believe this. Lord Jesus. I asked for a fourth of it, and y'all split three fourths between the four of y'all. How y'all don't see that as fair? How you don't see it as splitting it five ways as fair? Matter of fact, before we do any splitting, uh-huh. We want to see your bank records on how much you already got. <laughs> before how is that we a part give... of it, though, Tommy? But you know why, Carl? Because he brought this up. Because he did it this way. You know? Oh, okay. So we setting yeah. our own rules then. We huh? setting our own rules now. So. Oh, what, I what, see. What, 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 oh, wow. What that got to do with it? This is why black people can't win nothing together. Right? <laughs> Don't try to bring race in it. See, no, watch we this can't here. get along. <laughs> now, y'all ain't even going to play now. I'm going to play. Oh, we playing. I'm playing. I think we should I think we should all go in and spend 200 apiece. How about that? What if we lose? Then you just lost 200. <laughs> hey, see right there? What if we lose? You ain't trying to win now. Uh, oh, what if hey, we lose? So, Shirley, you ain't buying no groceries. Does it really make a difference? Hell yeah. Ain't like you ain't got it. (laughs) You got me there. You ain't bought grease. (laughs) You ain't cooking. You ain't got a spatula in your house. (laughs) You right, too. You ain't got no groceries. I got a crock pot. But you ain't got no pot. I'm going to throw that crock pot away. Next time I'm over there. (laughs) You ain't got a copper cross set or nothing. (sighs) Tong, Shirley. Tong. Okay, so let me ask y'all this. Let me ask y'all this. If we win, yes, yes, are we coming in the next day? I promise you, I'm not. Yeah, I, I think I will. I think I will. I'll I be think here I will. You. Yeah. Well, I'll be well, in here. I come in here. I stop by to turn yeah. my mic off. No, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, we gotta come no, in. Oh, no, I I'm think. coming in. I don't, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna mm. send the FCC five hundred thousand. <laughs> no. What, what's going on? Oh, oh, he wants to say something. Say? Oh, I'm, that's my fine. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get fired so hard. <laughs> no, Steve. What? But I'm not coming in. Oh, my last day? Hey, man. So how much is that? Five divided by four? I'm trying to divide it. By, by how much? 93 million. For what? What? You did it already? 93 million. It's 93 million oh, a piece. Oh, Gene already did it. Yeah. Nine and if he did it like the fourth million. year, uh-huh. he would take 116 million. And then that uh-huh. would leave And then what? we had to split the rest. And what? what is the rest? What would, what would we get? Well, 465. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But listen, listen. No, no. 93. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say, It'd be 352 million that we had to split up. Okay, that's not a bad Just divide it. Okay, so 352. That's 88 million. Oh, okay. Yeah. How y'all? That's 70. Did he just use reverse psychology on that? Talking about C. I think he did. I mean, it's not so bad. We didn't say yes. We're just saying it's not so bad. But I need to stay with one of y'all as soon as this old with. I'm not finna be staying with my family no more. <laughs> You're so if you win ignorant. $90 million, dollars, uh, oh, no, I'm, finna, I'm finna get cre- cremated right in front of them. I'm not finna be. <laughs> in front of them? <laughs> Stupid. I'm going in that fire and out the backside. I'm not finna be with them. They finna get that urn and put me on their little, little old, uh, uh, mantle, and we good. That's it. And what so are you gonna do question. without your family? Are they going to know you won? No. So you just died? Yes, right in <laughs> front of them. What are you planning on doing? What are you planning on doing? I'm doing everything, <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> what? Me and my uncle moving to Dubai. What are you talking about? I done what? figured it out, y'all. What? 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 If y'all give me a fourth, which would be the right thing to do, each one of y'all walks out with eighty-seven million dollars. Yeah, I mean that's still a great figure, you know. So I mean, if we I'm, did it, if we did it like that, it. we would have a greater chance of winning. I say let's do it. Agree to that. Give me the four. Air all y'all walk with eighty-seven. And why do you have to have that much again? Because Just I'm going to, to open up something to get y'all some more. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. We can't ask you no questions. Yeah. <laughs> we need to know. And, and 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 who goes to the store and and, and Tommy does ain't this got no plan for his money. All he wanna do is cremate himself in front of his family. <laughs>
Yes. Fake is dead. Man, that's I'm how not going to be able to do what I Why would I why would I Y'all be stuck with my power with all these men? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 